during these conversations, Anthony, I always bring up the wide receivers and then I tack on the tight ends, but this yep. is going to be the one exception <laughs> uh, because this guy, uh, it seems like forever ago at this point that I, I, I knew who he was because I followed the recruitment coming out of California. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like guys like Eric Gilbert, who eventually made his way to Georgia after, of course, the LSU and Florida stint mm -hmm. to a certain extent. And then uh, Darnell Washington were more celebrated. But it seems like forever ago that I thought this guy has to be the best tight end in the country. And then, it's, of course, he fulfilled all of that. And mm -hmm. he is just it's not even a question. No, it's not. And we probably would have heard a lot more about Brock coming out of high school, except he was one of those COVID babies. He didn't play his senior year in high school in California. So there's still a lot of people who not really understand what he could really do because he's a guy in high school who played like four different positions. He even played quarterback, I think, as a sophomore. Uh, they used to run a wishbone at school he was at. So uh, he can do a lot of things well. And, and what he has done is just really reinvented the position at Georgia. I mean, he's, he's done some things uh, for the Bulldogs that I've never, all the years I've been covering his team, never dreamed a tight end would be and it's really unfair to call him a tight end again because he does so many other things well i think we've spoken on this show before about the fact georgia will use him on jet sweeps and he even lined up at running back during the spring when georgia was going to do some of these injury you know deals and you know today you know as we record this uh he was a uh, uh one of the nominees for for the maxwell award which goes to the best overall player you know in the country and i don't believe a tight end has ever won that i would not put it past by past the uh, you know brock to you know, maybe not win it, but make a pretty good little push if he has the kind of year people think he will. Now we'll talk to wide receivers. And of course, they get tremendous transfers coming in from Missouri and Mississippi State. Dominic Levette's probably the best. I would think so. I mean, Dominic has come in and uh, really been a spark, really from the moment he stepped on campus. And uh, you're going to see him step in and, uh, at the slot. He'll be opposite, you know, Lad McConkey, who had a great, great sophomore year last season. And you got Ra Ra Thomas coming over from Mississippi State. Put him uh, with uh, Marcus Rosby, Jack Saint, Arian Smith had, had that long touchdown against Ohio State, um, and uh, was, was, uh, you know class they've got coming in three three talented freshmen, Dylan Bell, who's a, another big receiver that had did some good things as a true freshman, and I really think from a skill standpoint position, you know, as a group this may be the best group of receivers that Coach Smart has had you know, since he's been in Athens. They've had some very good receivers in the past, but only been like one or two. This year, you can probably count four guys who I think are, have a real shot to be an all-SEC type, type performer. Everything goes well. Anthony, before I let you go, this offseason should obviously be one of celebration, mm -hmm. and it has been, but it wasn't long after the national championship win that the issues off the field started. Mm -hmm. And what is strange is that we're all accustomed to what those issues are with particular programs. They sometimes involve grades not showing up for class, mm -hmm. drugs, different things. These are all driving related yeah. incidents. It's just crazy. It's, you know, if it wasn't so serious, it would be amusing, but yeah. it's not because it is so serious and, and it, but, but everything's driving related. Yeah. And it is a problem too. I mean, Coach Smart has, has admitted that. I mean, the players themselves that we talked to at media days have said, say, say, look, we know this problem. You know, we've got to we just got to do better. And I've got a little conspiracy theory about all this stuff. I think this is, in a, in a way, a back, backwards way, perhaps, maybe related to NIL. You've got guys making money to get these bigger, faster cars, and a lot of them want to see how fast they can go. So, you know, again, not making excuses for anybody. I mean, what the, the rest things have happened, have, you, know, you can't have that. You can't, you can't uh, you know, put other people's, innocent people's lives in danger by your behavior. I mean, that cannot, cannot happen, and that. And hopefully that's something Coach Smart will finally, you know, get a handle on because uh, if not, that's the kind of thing that could really, you know, bring a program down in a lot of respects. So that's something I know that they're uh, they're trying to do. They're, they bring in speakers. They do everything humanly possible to get guys to listen. They just have some hard-headed knuckleheads who are just, uh, you know, having an issue with that, it seems like right now. Anthony Dasher, UGA sports.com. Get on over there. Check out Anthony's work. We so much appreciate him stopping by, breaking things down for us. Anthony, thanks for stopping by. And sure, uh, we're going to go to that uh, stalwart defense next time we get together. They will do it.